wonderful people of the internet. Welcome back to Panda Creates Tutorials. I'm Panda and if you are new here, it is lovely to meet you. If you are returning, hello again. Hello. We are doing the first WeWa or Wing It with Anna for 2022. Uh, WeWa was a series that Anna Conroy um, and I started last year, possibly even the end of 2020. Um, but this will be number seven. And the idea behind a WeWa is that uh, we pick a method that Anna has never done before. Uh, she goes live and attempts it live and tries to figure out um, like how to do it. And then she does it her way. And then I follow up um, her live with a polished tutorial um, with... Um, how to do it like a step-by-step -step instruction if you guys want to give it a go yourself uh, she goes live in Aussie tumbler makers and crafters with um, that series so if you're Aussie and you love to craft please come and uh, hang out with us the link for that group will be in the description of this video but this WeWa is number seven as I said and we are going to do the double rainbow tumbler now uh, brave danger designs I will link her in the description as well is where you get the SVG uh, for this project from. She was the one to come up with it. It has been very popular in uh, America. Um, so we thought that we would give it a crack. Uh, it has been a while since I did a double-sided tape um, tumbler. Uh, the glitter bursts are a huge trend at the moment which uses the double-sided tape. However, this trend has been around, I think the last time it circulated around was about 2019 I believe, and we called it the stained glass method or the double-sided tape method. So at the top of your screen right now you're going to see a little thing pop up that shows you we've actually already done a stained glass tumbler um, as part of the WeWa, we did the Beauty and the Beast Rose. Uh, so we have already done something similar to this. But the next step up, uh, the stained glass trend that was going around a couple of years ago was a single image on the side of the cup. And somebody has taken that original idea and turned them into the burst wraps that we are now seeing everywhere. So this double rainbow tumbler is a, a take on the burst wrap. Anna did hers with all of the new bright rainbow neon range from the Glitzy Chicks. Uh, I'm going to do mine a little bit differently and I'm going to combine glitters and nail foils to get my effect. So I thought since it's been quite a while since I've done a tumbler from the very, very beginning to the very end, I'm going to use this opportunity because the method itself isn't super involved. I'm going to use this opportunity to show you my process from the very beginning to the very end. Okay, so here is my... 50, uh, my 20 ounce skinny sorry skinny tumblers do work best for excuse me do work best for um bursts because there is no tape up no curve no nothing you can just wrap it right around okay now as you can see if it'll pick up um i have already sanded and prepped this tumbler um every time that i get um stock in I sit there um, all on the same day that my stock comes in and I prep all my cups and then they go back into the box just so it's one less step that I have to do but <clears throat> we're going to go back through and do it again just so you can see what my process is so with some sandpaper um, I can never remember what grit it is but it is that is the code if you're buying it from Bunnings okay it is quite coarse as you can see and this is what I go in with when I'm prepping my cups, okay? So we're going to give the bottom a really good sand. Some people take the sticker off, some people don't. It's personal preference, I don't really care. Um, the bottoms get designed and done up and get my little care sticker put over it anyway, so it's not going to be a huge deal. And then we're going to go through and sand um, the rest of the cup but I'm going to mute you for that part just so the microphone doesn't pick it up and it's not like nails down a chalkboard, okay? So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay. 
okay now that I have sanded the whole way around and you will be able to see on your tumbler see there right you will be able to see on your stainless steel tumbler the sanding marks right that's when you know that you've done enough I then go in with my um, isopropyl alcohol I am getting better at saying that if anybody's following along at home I'm getting there and I spray my cup with that and then I go in with some paper towel and just give it a wipe like so you will see you get all the grungy yucky bits off the tumbler that's why it's important to wipe it down because now that we're going to go ahead and spray paint this i don't want any blur on my tumbler when i go to spray paint it okay so now this is ready to go and spray paint uh the way that i'm going to do this tumbler is i'm actually going to apply my glitter straight onto the wet spray paint um if you're new to tumbler making you may not know that trick so i thought i would include that as well you can actually put your glitter straight over your wet spray paint okay so the base that i'm going to do with this because i want the double rainbow to be the main event i'm just going to go in with a white iridescent this one is bailey from lush glitters and blanks as always everything that i use will be down in the description box and i actually have an affiliate code uh, for lush glitter and blanks which is 20 percent off so make sure when you're placing your orders with her you let her know where you found her um, and you use my discount code to to give you 20 percent off all of your orders okay so i'm going to go ahead now and go and spray paint this outside and then i will be back to apply the glitter all right guys so i am back i have just sprayed this if you can see it's still a little bit shiny i've just sprayed this with my uh, aussie export spray paint in matte white and while it is still wet let's just move you guys back and up a little bit just so you're in frame okay while the spray paint is still wet i'm going to go ahead and apply my glitter starting with the bottom of the cup first see like so and then straight onto the wet spray paint i'm going to put my glitter okay so this is a really quick and cost effective way of applying your base coat of glitter um you don't it doesn't have to be white uh try and color match your spray paints as much as you can um, especially if you're using um fine glitters because you will find if you color match as best as you can you'll only have to do one coat okay so i'm quickly going to put this back in the container again this is bailey from lush glitters and blanks it was actually named after um, her granddaughter who is a very pretty little ballerina from memory okay um and it is one of my favorite whites to do as a base coat because it is very pretty um, it has that full rainbow shift to it so it has the pink purple shift but it also has that green shift to it as well i know it's very hard to see with the lighting there we go please focus it's just really pretty okay i'm gonna go ahead finish it off making sure i've got even coverage the whole way around so all in the middle here i'm glittering anyway just to make it um all uniform when the first coat of epoxy goes on the double rainbow pattern is going to sit in the middle here the whole way around but i am going to have about a quarter of an inch on the top and the bottom um, where you're going to be able to see the white okay so i'm making sure that all around the top of my cup and all around the bottom has enough glitter on it to still be effective and that is what we are left with 
see how stunning that is I love this white okay so now this is gonna go on my stand uh, I'm gonna leave it what's the time I'll probably leave it it's gonna end up sitting for about three hours because it's dinner time and then share you know I've got three kids so dinner showers bedtimes all of that fun stuff um, but usually if you're doing it this way leave it half an hour maybe an hour and then it's ready for epoxy okay uh, so it is a good little shortcut um, to keep in mind if you've never done it before you don't have to wait for the spray paint to dry and then go ahead with your mod podge or your tacket or your hang method or anything like that you can apply the glitter directly to the wet spray paint and then obviously as the spray paint dries it will keep the glitter in place okay because this is all one color i'm not going to bother spray sealing it um, we're just going to come back and put the first coat of resin on and then from there we'll start our double rainbow design Okay, so we're going to put our first coat of epoxy. I'm just going to turn that off. That's better. I'm going to put our first coat of epoxy on our 20 ounce skinny for this double rainbow. Uh, I have mixed up 15 mils of the amazing Clearcast Plus because I'm still using that at the moment. So that is uh, 7.5 mils of part A, 7.5 mils of part B. But before we go any further, I'm just going to slip in my little safety notice. Hi guys, a quick safety disclaimer for when working with resin. Please make sure you always protect yourself by wearing eye goggles or other protective eyewear. A half face respirator mask with interchangeable filters. I got mine from Bunnings and they also sell the replacement filters. And of course, gloves. Now I prefer to work with nitrile gloves, but in a pinch, vinyl gloves will also work. These are the two types that will not tear easily when working with resin. Please make sure you stay safe while you're having fun and happy creating. Alrighty, let's go. So this doesn't have to be a particularly thick coat. Um, of epoxy basically all we're doing is sealing in um, our glitter okay I did not spray seal this because it's white glitter over a white base okay but we do want that first coat on there before we go ahead um, and do our double rainbow design. And that is that done. Um, she was very thirsty though. Um, so 15 mils was just enough to put um, a sealing coat on it. If you wanted to have a thicker coat, I definitely would recommend doing 25 mil, uh, 20 mils, even 25 mils. Um, but because it, not necessarily a hang method, I wanted it a little bit thicker than a hang method coat would be. Um, but I just wanted a thin coat because I don't want it being um, too bulky um, when we go to put the design on. So I did get full coverage with that. I'm going to let that spin um, for the next... 12 hours or so and then we will move on to doing our um, burst design okay so let's move on to where we actually have to get our um, SVG ready for cutting uh, as always I am using silhouette studio in the business edition but the steps are very similar if you are using Cricut design space uh, because we're not doing anything besides like resizing and creating an offset I'm actually going to leave the design space um, tutorial out of this um, because it is so similar um, anybody that is watching this that does get stuck please let me know down in the comments and I will assist you the best way that I possibly can but because this part is so straightforward and most of the work um, has been done for us with the SVG from Brave Danger Designs I'm just going to do it in my um, silhouette studio okay uh, now if you still haven't bought the file I will link it down in the description below as I always do with everything that I use but first things first um, we're going to import um, our SVG okay so when you do buy the file it comes with 
a double rainbow and a double rainbow part two. For the purpose of this tutorial, we are using the double rainbow part two. The double rainbow has a full rainbow as you can see here. It has a full rainbow, but it's in the middle. And then on either side is a half of a rainbow so that when you wrap it around the cup, those two halves meet in the middle and create a hole. Okay, but we're going to use, I'm just going to drag and drop that into there. We are going to use um, the part two today because, hang on, I'm just going to get rid of all of these red lines that you can see on your screen here, are the um, offsets for the design. However, I found when I imported mine and resized it and everything uh, the first time um, that I did like a trial with this design um, before I went ahead and made a tutorial for you guys, I couldn't get it work to work for the life of me. Okay, so we are, hang on, I'm just moving it over so you guys can see, and we're going to zoom in. We are using the double rainbow file, which looks like this. Okay, now my 20 ounce skinny, I know is 9.4 inches in circumference, and it is... I think 9.5 inches from top to bottom but me personally I want to leave a little bit of room on the top and the bottom and just have my design wrapping around the middle so I'm gonna go ahead with my design now I'm gonna open my transform panel go across to the scale and I'm going to resize my image to 9.4 inches wide to wrap around the cup and 7.5 inches tall to go from top to bottom okay so now that we've got this sorted i'm going to right click and ungroup because this actually comes with this little square okay i want to move that square out of the way for now and only have this part because we we don't need an offset this box here you will need when you're actually cutting into the transfer tape because that's what cuts around it to give you a nice clean design okay but just for now right the gray lines are what we're going to be cutting on our transfer tape so this is the design for our transfer tape but i'm going to go ahead now and click my rainbow i'm going to click my little offset button on the side here okay i'm going to click offset wait for it to come up and i'm going to drop that down to 0 0.05 inches okay and you'll see that that makes them nice and skinny and apply okay so now i can move my rainbow out of the way and i am left with i'm just going to change this all to red so that you can see the difference okay i am now left with this offset okay so this is what we're going to be using at the end of the tutorial i'm going to cut my offsets in a nice gold metallic i'm just going to right click and group that so it's all one piece okay um this red here we're going to move to the side for now um when i go to cut it um, this red is going to be a gold metallic permanent vinyl. It's the Metamark M7 in gold metallic because that's what we're going to use to put around our lines to like, kind of like a pinstripe. Um, but uh, well, it is, it's a pinstripe, but <laughs> it's an offset so that we have the same shape as the rainbow. Okay. And then coming back over here, I'm just going to select both my rainbow and my box and I'm going to make sure that they're centered with each other again, like so. I'm going to right click and group it. Okay, and now if I open my page setup, I want an A4 size. Okay, I'm going to click my design and I'm going to click object, rotate, rotate by 90 degrees and then this little crosshairs box at the top is the center to page i'm going to click that okay so now that i know my transfer tape sheet is an a4 page that's going to sit right nice and in the middle i'm going to go ahead and cut this on my transfer tape and then once that is cut i'm going to cut my offset in my gold vinyl 
okay so black is for transfer tape the red here is the offset for and you don't have to do gold you can do whatever color you like to match your color scheme right but these are basically the pinstripe lines that are going to go over the top of what we've already glittered so i'm going to go ahead now and get these all cut up and then we're going to move on to the next section okay guys once all that is done and you have cut your design into your double-sided tape if i can get the light to reflect on it there is our double rainbow okay so um for this tutorial i am going to be glittering it off the cup um if you wanted to give it a crack at putting um, your template onto your cup first and then glittering it uh, you're welcome to do that um, Flynn sisters have done a tutorial where she does it that way and it is basically applying the double-sided tape exactly the same way as you would a vinyl wrap now I have um, done a couple of the full wraps um, of these now and I have found that putting it onto uh, the cup first and then glittering it is a little bit trickier than glittering a flat surface and then putting it on however the second time that I did do a full wrap burst um, and glittered off the cup and then went to try and put it on um, I found that because it is double-sided tape um, even as slow as I went when I was applying the wrap onto the actual cup, I still ended up with tiny little annoying wrinkles all through the design. Um, there was a lady on TikTok, and I can't remember her name, but I will try and go through my saved videos and find her. If it was you and you're watching this, I do apologize that I forgot who you were. Um, I tend to fall into, you know, four or five hour TikTok holes. So I don't always remember who, but um, she um, was putting her vinyl onto uh, her double-sided tape design sorry onto vinyl so that when she went to wrap it it gave it a little bit more stability it wasn't a stretchy it wasn't going to break and it's you're not going to get the wrinkles um, the double-sided tumbler tape is very very thin um, so sometimes you can rip it while you're trying to put it on and sometimes it stretches out of proportion as well um, having said that though um, I think it was Monique uh, in Anna's live when she went live and did this as a wee um, I think it was Monique that told Anna to do it this way so it is well known um, but that's how I do mine now so this being I'll show you again that's our double sided tape this is just white Metamark M7 okay so I have put it on my um, cutting mat uh, because I buy the rolls so it doesn't lay flat this is going to keep it flat for me uh, I'm going to get my weeding tool and try and pick up a corner do you want to cooperate? Looks like we're going with this corner. Okay. Very carefully taking off the back. Sorry guys, I'm going to have to turn my light on. I know that that's really glary for you. Um, but I'm actually filming this at night time and I can't see. So I'm trying to get this to lift without it taking the tape with it.
like it's trying to do. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we got there in the end. The edges are always the most difficult part. Okay, we got there. So I'm going to peel this back to about there. I'm then going to come back around and line this up onto my M7. Like so. And then I'm gonna get one of the LBB resin stir sticks. And it's just like contacting a school book. Right. I'm slowly pulling the backing sheet away as I press down. Okay. Trying to get it to stay as straight as possible. This just ensures that you have no air bubbles in your double sided tape as it goes on the vinyl. Oh. And just where do you think you're all going? Sorry, guys. <laughs> I knocked you. Okay, so I told you I need more room to work. Actually, what I'm going to do is move my tripod off. There we go. The legs of it were sitting on this this mat, and every time I knock it, the legs were going with it. Okay, so that is now adhered to our M7, so that when we go to apply it to our cup. Okay, it's going to be a lot easier for two reasons. One, we can pull the backing tape, the backing sheet straight off the vinyl now and apply the vinyl onto the cup and that's hopefully going to give us a little bit more um, um, life time. Um, please focus, thank you, as well uh, because as we know Metamark M7 is a permanent vinyl okay uh, but secondly it's now going to give us more stability um, so instead of trying to apply very very thin double-sided tape that we've gone to all of the effort of glittering and making pretty we now have that extra layer of vinyl and it's going to give it a little bit more stability so it's not going to ring if we go slow and apply it the same way as we would every other vinyl wrap um, it's not going to tear, it's not going to warp, it's not going to stretch out of proportion. We're going to keep a nice pattern. Okay, so that is now our double sided tape on the Metamark backing, and we are ready to start glittering. Okay guys, let's get to the fun part. So um, as I explained at the beginning of the video, I'm going to be doing mine with glitter and nail foil. I've chosen a pink and purple pattern for this um, because I wanted to do it a little bit differently to how Anna did it with her rainbow brights. So the first one that we're going to be using is Icy Pink from DJ Designs. And then the other three glitters are all from... Uh, what used to be Linda B, but is uh, she sold her business and it got taken over by Kate. So she doesn't have a website or anything. Um, her glitter is great for baubles and stuff like that as well. Um, I was buying heaps of Linda um, originally. 
Um, and every time that I run out, I go back and I restock with Kate. So uh, her group is called Kate's Glitter Australia. I will, as always, link her below in the description. But these are the three that we're using today. Metallic Cadbury, Dusky and Iridescent Flush, which is a white that has a slight... Oh, it's got... My container has epoxy on it, guys. Sorry. It's a white, but it's got like a high flash to it. So... Oh, let's see if I can do this. That is the colour scheme that we're going to be using for our rainbow. They are all metallics. And then we're also going to use this funky, fun rainbow nail foil. Um, if you've watched my foil burst tutorial, this is out of the same set as um, that print that we used in that tutorial. Um, I will link, I got mine from Amazon, um, but since buying mine, Brooke from the Glitzy Chicks actually has this set in stock. Uh, this is the set if anybody is interested. Okay. Um, so I will be linking her down below instead of Amazon um, because you know that we like to support local. So let's get started okay so we always want to go the dark colors first um, and I am going to turn my light on for a second just so I can see the cut lines because I know that that's the middle then I want to go pink then I want to go purple actually you know what would be a smarter way of doing this Nope, because it doesn't work. Foil. Oh, it works enough. Okay. And then I want to go Dusky. And then I want to go Cadbury. And then I want to go Foil again. And then icy pink and then flash. And then mm, let's go Cadbury again and then more foil. Dusky and then Cadbury again to finish off. And that can be flash. Okay, so that's flash. That's flash, just so I don't stuff it up, guys. Um, now, working in, that's going to be Cadbury, Dusky, that's foil. That's Cadbury. I know it seems a little bit superfluous, but trust me, when you go to do this, <laughs> mapping it out, so that's flash, icy pink, foil, Cadbury, dusky, and foil. When you start glittering, you're going to thank yourself for um, labelling it. Okay, my little pen didn't do too well, but having said that, I can definitely read what we need to do. So, the darkest colour is... I've got two that are pretty much of a muchness, so we're going to go in with all of the Cadbury first. Okay, which is... Just with my weeding tool... I want to very carefully lift this top bit without taking the double sided tape with it. Whoops. So that's Cadbury. And 
Oh, this one goes right down the side. Okay. It's Cadbury. Cadbury and this one is Cadbury and that's the last of it okay so now that all my pieces that I wanted to be the purple are pulled up I'm gonna go ahead And pop the glitter on. And this is why you start with the darker colours first, because you don't want your um you don't want to go all light and then realise when you're doing your dark so that it's all bled in everywhere. So this one went right down the side. This one goes all over the top. Okay, and then I'm just going to get my finger and smush it. making sure that I'm covering all of that tape with the glitter and I'm aware of which finger I use guys but I don't know my mind just likes using my longest finger and <laughs> it just happens to be that one so you're all going to have to deal with it. I do it in a lot of my videos. A lot of you have picked me up on it before. I don't mean any... I don't mean anything by it when I'm crafting. Unless I'm doing it to a project. That's given me grief. And that's a bit different. Okay, so we're going to tip it up. Ta-da! Now I want to get... My little... Me a little dusting brush and as I'm dusting I'm realizing that that's wet I don't actually think I have another big brush okay so you're going to have to go in with this little one for now and then I will stop filming. Oh, I'm going to have to write all my labels again. That's all right. We'll finish doing this. I'll go and get a brush that's not going to give me grief. And then we'll come back and start again. And I'm just basically removing all of the excess off the rest of the project so that we are then left with the start of our rainbow. So I'm going to go and find me a brush that is dry um, and then we'll move on to the next part. Okay, crisis averted. Okay, so we have, if I hold it up to the light, hopefully you can see it's a really pretty Cadbury purple. Cadbury as in the chocolate. Okay, so we're going to move on to our, I'm trying to get it in frame. There we go. Maybe if I move it this way a bit. There we go. 
So we're going to move on to our icy pink. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure I only did... this one part um, what was that that was in between so it's this one So this is the icy pink from DJ Designs. Working it through again. me a little this thing best invention ever those lint rollers okay. this foam brush was the only thing that I could find that wasn't super staticky um, so that's what we're going in with now I'm going to try and clean it up as much as I can. But now that we're adding, we've got more than one glitter on there. Mm -hmm. There's a bit here. But it just needs a little bit more love. There we go. Yeah, because we're working with more than one glitter now, I don't want any cross-contamination. So, getting glitter everywhere. <coughs> Excuse me. I think what I'm going to do is just keep complaining that I need more workspace until one day you'll be watching a video and it'll just be like, hey guys, guess what? I have more workspace. We're going to put that back into the container. And now that I'm not so worried about the purple going everywhere, I'm going to go back in and give it more of a brush down before we move on to our next part. But, as you can see, our rainbow is starting to take shape. So I'm going to clean up my workstation and then we'll be back to do the dusky. Okay. Found my weeding tool. I was about to say I'm going to have to stop this and start again when I find my weeding tool. But no, we found it. It's okay. We can continue. So, dusky is this one here. It is also this top one here. And this one here. Beautiful. So the middle is going to be foil. This is going to be, oh, actually, what we're going to do 
is do the dusky first and then I'll explain it. Okay, I'm going to show you why it's the double rainbow pattern. Um, and double rainbows um, have been very special to me. Um, I have, well, they're not little babies anymore, they're 11. Um, but I have boy girl twins, um, which nobody was expecting. <laughs> Um, I sure didn't um, and the day that I went for my dating scan before we knew that it was twins um, there was actually a double rainbow that morning um, that I saw and then that day I found out I was growing two babies and not one so double rainbows for me will always um, have a special place in my heart because that was I saw a double rainbow on the day that I found out I was having twins but um, fun story and keeping in mind I was a young mum right um, I'd just had my first son um, I was 21 years old he was about 14 weeks old when we found out that um, I was pregnant again um, so I definitely wasn't expecting twins um, it did run on their dad's side of the family but to my well what I had been led to believe was that it skipped every second generation um, and because the kid's dad was supposed to be a twin but um, sadly she lost the girl um, during pregnancy um, I thought I was safe but no apparently not but um when we went in for the ultrasound um the doctor says to me oh have have you had a scan done for this pregnancy before and i was like no why and he goes oh because i'm picking up two heartbeats and my dumb ass turned around and said does that mean the baby has two hearts and this this poor ultrasound technician just looked at me like are you fucking serious <laughs> He's like, no, there's two babies. And I was like, oh. And he goes, do you want me to give you guys a minute? And I was like, oh, yes, please. And he walked out and I turned to their dad and I went, oh, man, we're screwed. We are so screwed. <laughs> but you know what? You learn to cope. Right? Whether it's one baby, two babies, ten babies. Right? Some, I mean, some days you do it because you have no other choice and you have to do it. Let's be honest. But we found a way. Um, and I've been a single mum since they were 18 months old. Um, so, <laughs> we got there. We're, we're doing alright. They're 11 now. And my eldest is 12. So, I mean, I've managed to keep them alive for the first part of their childhood. Yay me, gold stars. But yes, this poor um, ultrasound technician was probably thinking, oh my god. <laughs> But, now that our rainbow is starting to take shape, okay, so this middle bit is going to be foil, um, this part here is going to be foil, and up here is going to be foil, and then this line here on both of them, before the purple starts again, is going to be the white. And so this line here is what separates the first rainbow from the second rainbow. And that's what makes it a double rainbow. Okay. So make sure, see how this purple is the first one that joins. When you're doing this pattern, the last actual single rainbow on both sides, that is your spacer, so to speak. So that you end up with one rainbow and two rainbows. Okay, so just a little tip moving forward. Again, I'm going to put this away um, and clean up my station and then we will be back um, to do the white. Okay, so we're ready to go in with our flash, um, which is our circuit breaker, so to speak. Oh, that bled. Oh, that's disappointing. That's okay. I'm not gonna panic. I 
but yes it's bled under the line so that is a little bit disappointing but what are you gonna do so I've also got these top sections earmarked for the white as well We will do them first. Okay, and then And you can do your circuit breakers any colour that you like. Um, if you want it to look more realistic, do it blue. So that it's in the blue sky. But um, because our cup is white, like the base of our cup, we did with the Bailey, remember? Um, once it's on there, it's just going to look a little bit more uniform having this section white. Um, but because I'm using metallics um, and Bailey is an iridescent, that's why we are going with the flush. If you can see, turn that off. Yeah. We now have our flush. So, before I do any dry brushing, because this is white, I'm going to put this back in the container and then I'm going to dry brush it and then we'll be back to do the foil. Okay, so we're now going to go in with our rainbow leopard uh, animal print foil. Okay, and we're going to do this section by section. So first section I'm going to do is this middle bit here. I'm going to line my foil up with the tape. And we're going to apply it the same way as what you would um, to a tacket base or something like that. If you've used nail tape before, it works exactly the same way. And then all we need to do is very gently peel it off. Okay, one part. So now we're going to go into... This next section. There we go, we got there in the end. Okay. And same deal, but we're going to go bit by bit now. Okay. I'm actually going to get the little stirring stick that we used just to kind of work it into the edges to make it stick a bit more that's better see so one side so now just so it's not getting in my way I'm gonna cut that off and I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side Lay my nail tape down. Whoops. Throwing everything away. Make sure I'm working into those lines because if you see here, I didn't work it into the lines and now I've got a little bit of white spacing. That's okay. I can go through and fix that. That's no issues at all. Um.
there's a crease in my tape so there we go and now I'm going to go straight across All right, again making sure I'm working in my edges and that is our double rainbow so I do have a couple of spots where it didn't quite stick I'm just going to go back over with my tape there we go Ta -da! isn't that cute Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. Maybe we're not because I've lost my weeding tool again. This will be the second time in the space of 10 minutes that I've lost my stupid weeding tool. Where did I put it? Oh, I found it, guys. Found it, stop looking. Okay. It's them damn fairies. They like to mess with me on the best of days. Okay. So. You know the drill now, guys, don't you? Pushing in my edges, making sure that that's down nice and firm. And then we're going to gently peel back. So again, we're going to do one side, <coughs> excuse me, and then the other side. Whoops. Still got those two, but that's okay. All right, so I have. See how you can see the two lines where it was sectioned. So what I'm going to do after this is all spray sealed, so that I don't get glitter everywhere. I'm going to go in where it's white and put tiny, tiny little bits of tacket. That's why I'm keeping all of my scrap pieces. If you can see, I still have sections on my scrap pieces that I've been cutting off that I can still use. So I will go through once it's all spray sealed and none of it's going to move. I'm going to go in around the edges of the nail tape. This one's got one tiny little line there, but this one, this side is quite noticeable. So I will fill it in with tacket and go back over it with nail tape and fill in those gaps. Okay. Um, I still haven't figured out what to do about my bleed, but I will figure that out as well. Don't you worry. Um, but the last piece that we have to do now 
this across the top here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that off as well. Mm. Almost covers it. I'm going to use my nail because I can feel that groove better with my nail. And I do have a wrinkle in this one now as well. There's a little wrinkle here. So that's going to leave a gap as well. But you live and you learn. Okay. So I'm going to go in with my edges and just fix up the little corners that the tape didn't quite reach when we laid it across. And that is what we are left with okay keeping in mind that this white part I oh know I haven't forgotten it it is glittered see if I can get it to come up it does have glitter on it but that is my double rainbow design so I'm going to spray seal it uh, once I've spray sealed it I'm gonna go in like I said with my tacket and fix up my foil areas um, if you want to know how to use um, nail foil with tacket, a little box is going to pop up at the top right now for when we did our um, foil, our, like our unicorn burst, our foil burst. Um, that goes into a lot more detail for that step, so I'm not going to bother with this. Uh, so I am going to spray seal it and do two coats of Rust-Oleum two times clear. I'm using the satin at the moment. Um, once that's all dried, I'm going to go back in with my tacket and fix up this nail foil so that there's not, see the gaps? We want to get rid of those gaps. And then once all that is done, we will be back to do the next step. Okay guys, so this is what we currently have. As you can see, I have fixed up all of my bits where there was gaps in the foil. Um, there are a few gaps if you look really closely around the outside, but that's not going to matter because that's where our pinstripes are going. I also tried to fix our bleed here, and it is a little bit better, but it's still a little bit purple. So I've decided that once this goes on the cup, this is where my um, design or my vinyl um, decal is going to go. Um, just to cover up that little whoopsie because I did try to fix it and it's not as purple as it was But it's still pretty like you you can you can see it Okay, so where that's going to be covered up once um, the name or whatever ends up going on it Okay, um, I also went ahead and started putting our uh, gold pinstripes on um, My first instinct was to wait until they were on the cup and then try to put them on the cup And then when I was thinking about it, I thought to myself no Laura It's going to be much easier to try and place them when it is flat um, and then um, I'm, once they're all on, I'm going to spray seal it again just to make sure that that vinyl doesn't lift off so that when we go to put it on the cup and start to epoxy, it's not going to lift on me and create little bumps and, and whatever else. So if you can see, I've done this first line that comes in here and the second and the third, and then I've done this one here. I just wanted to make sure that they were going to stay um, and not lift up. Okay, so I have started because I just wanted to do a test run. It's all working fine. So this is how I'm going to recommend that you do it while it is still flat. Whoop, I shouldn't hit the table because that makes my camera have a fit. Um, while it's flat and on your table, it's going to be a lot easier, especially with the curves. Okay, um, as I mentioned, once I'd fixed up all of the foil um, 
and made it all pretty again. It does have two coats of Rust-Oleum two times in the clear so that we're not getting any transfer off it anymore and that glitter is going to stay put. So now we're going to go ahead and do this pinstriping and you're going to get my big belly in this shot I'm really sorry but the easiest way for me to do this is by working upside down so I wanted to make sure I stayed in frame while I do it okay so if you remember at the beginning of the video when we were in uh, silhouette studio or if you're using design space in design space this is our offset and I cut it in that really pretty gold metallic so now I'm going to get my exacto knife And we're going to finish the pointy bits first and then we're going to work through the rainbow part okay um i did find that going from point to end is a lot quicker uh, and a lot easier than trying to go from edge to edge and i'm just going to move all of my stuff out of the way so that i have some room okay so moving on we've only got one more of these to go that is really grubby that's okay I'm going to pick up my vinyl from the point okay making sure it's in two hands so that whoop, it doesn't cross over I'm going to get my point I'm going to line my point up with the point that is on my design and then I'm going to work out from one side and then the other side okay so as you're running your finger because of the way that it's cut it should pretty much line itself up but you do need to babysit it so that it goes all the way to the edge like so that's actually a little bit crooked so we'll fix that okay and now coming back up the other side making sure that I'm following that line and that it's sitting halfway between the glitter and the foil that we've done and it's on see so now I just go over with my finger rub it down um, I don't want to use my scraper tool because I don't want to risk scraping up any of the glitter right and this is why I was saying when I'm finished doing this part I am going to spray seal it again just to seal that vinyl down so that it doesn't lift when we go and add epoxy okay so from there I'm going to finish off this rainbow because I've already started um, and then I'll speed up the rest of it okay so we'll do a couple of loops together and then I'll speed up the rest so same deal again I'm going to lift from the top here and pull it off okay now these ones I did find starting at one end like you would a normal pinstripe like so and guiding it up and around was easier okay so the one with the point start in the middle it's so much easier she says as she manages to okay there we go okay so we're putting it on as we would a normal pinstripe making sure that that vinyl sits halfway between our dusty pink and our purple so that as it comes up and around to this curve here it should be a straight shot straight down there like so Oops. I do have a little there we go so I'm going to push that down make sure that that's adhered and we have our second pinstripe 
See that? Okay. So let's do... Excuse me, come and play with us. Let's do the middle on this side. Lining it up down the bottom. Making sure I have a straight line going up so that as I come up and around, that's wonky. I can say that that's wonky. There we go, that's better. And down the other side. My bottom didn't go on straight. My butt's crooked. There we go. Once I have it where I want it, I'm going to push it down. I do have like a wrinkle. So I'm going to lift that up and push down with my finger so that it all evens itself out. And we have that middle bit. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead now. Um, I am going to speed it up. Uh, it will depend on how long the video is. Um, if you guys saw with the Damask, um, there was a lot of part. Well, there was a couple of parts actually that I said, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and speed it up. Um, and then it got cut from the video completely. That's because uh, anybody that's been watching me for a while now knows that my videos can be in excess of an hour. Um, and I'm quite conscious of how much time um, of yours that I am using up. Um, so I try to keep them around, like tutorials that are involved like this, I try to keep them around the hour mark. Um, so... <laughs> If I ever say I'm just going to speed it up and then the footage disappears completely, it's because when I go into the editing section, um, it, it ends up on the editing floor, so to speak. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this and then we will be back. Okay, so here she is. All the pinstripes are done. I just caught here. Yeah, I just caught some bubbles in the camera. It has been spray sealed. Oh, here it is. It has been spray sealed. Um, and the pinstripes have been done. And then another coat of spray seal. And if you see our little boo-boo here, the pinstripes covered that quite nicely. So it's a lot smaller than it was originally. So all we have left to do now is put it on the cup and then put a um, coat of epoxy mm -hmm. over the top. But that is what we're working with. Okay. So if you remember at the beginning, we actually put our double-sided tape onto the vinyl to make it easier. Here is our 20-ounce skinny um, that we've already glittered and epoxied. So now all that is left is to put it on the same way that you would a vinyl wrap. So I'm going to lift up one corner. I'm going to attempt to lift up a corner. Here we go. Okay, <clears throat> I like the Metamark um, vinyl because it's got the grid lines on the back. Okay, so I'm going to lift it up like so. Fold it to that first grid line there so that I know it's all even. Try and line it up to where I want it to go. Okay. So, hang on. I'm going to move you guys without knocking over my tripod. I want to get a boom. I know I keep saying it in like the past few videos. I've got no room. So I'm, I'm investing in new equipment where everything's off my desk. Including, if you see, this thing here is a big stand that my computer then sits on. It's all going. 
I'm sick of not being able to swing me elbows wherever I want to swing me elbows. Okay, so making sure top of the cup, I'm going to line it up so that it sits enough in the middle so that I've got that line on the top and the bottom and that woo, and then it sits in a straight line okay like so from there I'm now going to peel back bit by bit and then on the center of the cup I'm going to roll and push down at the same time bit by bit to make sure that I get no air bubbles no wrinkles you do want to apply pressure all the way around and there it is so our seam is here as you can see it's lined up perfectly I do have a slight bit of white gap right <clears throat> but that's easy enough to go in with a tiny little bit of tacket and the same colored glitter and fix that up so that it sits so that there's no gap okay but that I'll put it this way for you that is our double rainbow tumbler ta-da so now all we need to do now guys is put a coat of epoxy on it so I'm gonna turn the camera off I'm gonna fix this seam like I said I'm just gonna go in with a tiny tiny little bit of tacket actually do I have I don't know where my tacket one is okay so I'm going to show you <clears throat> this is liquid fusion right but these little needle tip bottles I have one that's full of my tacket 50 50 mix and I have one that's my liquid fusion so this is the one that I use for rhinestones um, I'm going to find the one that has my tacket in it I think it's out on the bench because I was cleaning out the needle um, I'm actually going to go in with that instead of a paintbrush so it's more precision so I'm going to fix that up and then we'll be back to put the epoxy on and then we're done we're done okay guys the final part of this tutorial is putting the um, final coat of epoxy on uh, I do want to put in a little disclaimer first um, I'm not actually sure if this will be the final coat of epoxy. I have mixed up 20 mils of the Amazing Clearcast Plus. Um, <clears throat> it should be enough for full coverage, um, but if once it's cured it's still a little bit bumpy or something like that, I may have to sand it back and do a final, final coat. Okay, so this is all that I'm going to do in this tutorial is this final coat, so to speak, for this tutorial. Um, but if you go to do this and you realize that after you put what you thought was the final coat on, you still need another coat, then that's okay. It's all right. You can keep doing, you know, final coats and, until you get that really nice, smooth, glossy, glassy finish. Um, but this will be the final coat for tutorial's sake. Okay, so as I said, I mixed up 20 mils of Amazing Clearcast Plus. You can get that from uh, LBB Resin or Aldex Molds. As always, the links are down in the description. Um, and that is 10 mils of Part A and 10 mils of Part B. Um, uh, I, I use a few different resins. I go through moods. Um, EX74 has always been a real favorite of mine because it has that UV um, stabilizer in it to stop it from going yellow so quickly. The amazing, the original amazing clear cast I was using uh, when I first started resin uh, about oh, almost four years ago now. Um, but I did find, especially on cups, 
with white uh, that it did yellow really 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 quickly so I stopped using uh, amazing clearcast it's really good for beginners because it is very beginner friendly but as you move through this craft more you're gonna want something that's a little bit more stable long term especially if you're selling your products the amazing clearcast plus does have that UV stabilizer in it to stop it from going yellow so quickly so um, although I'm still very much an EX74 fan uh, I am finding that I am enjoying the amazing Clearcast Plus. So, without further ado, let's get some resin on this cup, shall we? Here's this seam too coming around. I did fix that uh, with a little bit of tacket um, and some glitter. Um, I didn't do, I didn't redo the foil um, because it was such a tiny, tiny little bit. I thought, no, stuff it. Um, but I did fix the purple. Um, and then I gave it another, the whole cup, um, another really good spray seal just to make sure, especially with the white on either side, just to make sure that that was all really nicely sealed in and that wasn't going to move. So I did respray the whole cup um, with a special focus on that seam. Making sure I'm going top to bottom. And creating a really good seal around my rim here comes that seam line again see all fixed up no worries it's no worries it's done don't forget to do the bottom of the cup Okay, so now I'm just feeling for any dry spots um, if there's resin on there it'll slide and glide really easily if there's no resin you will feel your fingers catch a little bit okay so if I'm going the whole way around my cup and I'm getting that really nice glide from top to bottom then I know that I've got full coverage like so okay and now I can go in with what's left of my resin Uh, amazing Clearcast Plus, like all coating resins, is self-leveling. So I can put it on the cup like this. Hit it with a little bit of heat from my heat gun just to warm it up a little bit. And as it turns, it's going to even itself out. Okay. want to make sure where it where our design oh, oh no I've got to be careful not to push up don't push up on your pinstripes <gasps> this is not the time to stuff up the whole cup is it <laughs> in the last step I think I'd cry honestly I think if we were putting the epoxy on this and I stuffed it up badly enough that I had to strip it you'd, you'd, you'd hear me bawling on film um, without reservation, without care, I think I'd fall apart. Okay, so lucky, lucky that didn't happen. But yes, <laughs> don't go against the grain, guys. Don't be me. So, ta da! That is our double rainbow tumbler using the uh, SVG design from Brave Danger Designs. As always, thank you all so much for joining me for yet another video. I do appreciate each and every one of you because without you, I wouldn't be here. So thank you so much for all of your ongoing support, for tuning in every week and seeing what I've been up to. Uh, for those of you that keep liking my video and commenting on my video, you guys are the real MVPs. Um, clicking that little thumbs up button actually boosts me in the algorithm so that YouTube goes, oh wow, people actually like this content. This content is worth promoting and then when you're watching like when other people are watching other videos you know at the end of the video where it comes up with like recommendations of what to watch next um i get featured 
YouTube starts to pay attention to me and starts recommending me to people who may not otherwise even know I exist and that's how my channel is growing so thank you to all of you who do click that like button if you haven't subscribed yet please click that subscribe button um, even if you turn notifications off because you don't want me to be annoying you every week um, I'm not going to take offense to that but if you can click that subscribe button I would really appreciate it I think at last count I was about a hundred and eighty five subscribers away from hitting 2000 so that is my next goal and my next milestone I'd really appreciate your support with that otherwise thank you so much for joining me uh, the next video that I have coming for you um, is a I'm still working on it um, but the glitzy chicks have released a beach set so I am doing a beach tutorial and I've already done a beach tutorial but I'm doing a um, beach tutorial that ties in with a demonstration of her new beach set um, I'm still in the middle of filming that uh, obviously Weewa takes priority so I'm slipping this in at the end of the week even though I've already got another video done this week I'm slipping I'm sneaking sneaking this one in um, and then probably uh, this will upload on probably tomorrow so Saturday um, possibly Sunday and then I'm gonna have the beach for you Tuesday or Wednesday next week so make sure you keep an eye out for that um, I'm also planning to attempt my first live on YouTube again that will probably happen closer to the end of the month so if you would like to come and support me for my very first YouTube live please make sure that you have your notifications turned on so you know when it's coming otherwise please enjoy your weekend and the rest of your week and I will see you guys next time Bye.